night. Hey, it is. Well, hey guys, I'm really, uh, really sorry didn't get to y'all last night. Uh, missed my, uh, missed my live stream window last night, and I apologize for that. Been busy lately, uh, and, and it should be seminar night. You guys should be seeing a seminar on, on this channel tonight, and you're not. I apologize for that as well. I wasn't able to make it up to LFT. If things, and as soon as I get done with this, I got to go take care of my kids. So we're just going to do top five baits tonight and do Q&A, whatever any of y'all's questions that you might have. Let me know. Hang on, get a couple things set up here. There we go. Ben Bossy, what's up? All right. Hey, let me know if the uh, picture and everything's coming in good. Yep, fresh haircut. There it is. I mean, they tens, but I keep them clean, though. You know what I'm saying? Keep them clean, baby. Keep them clean. Get this party started, Larry Sackler says. Love it. Appreciate all you guys coming in. If y'all have any fishing questions, go ahead and start dropping them in comments now. Uh, the top five bases week is going to be kind of funny because uh, it ain't five. I literally, right now, every single day, there's two baits that I'm catching fish on. And customers are using those. And, hey, I'm throwing other stuff, trying to figure out a another bite, you know. But I'm telling you, the two baits that are catching fish every single day, and they're the only two that are catching fish every single day, is a wacky stick bait and a quarter ounce trap every single day catching plenty of numbers of fish on those two baits. In fact, I'm going to show you the trap that we've been using uh, this week. And I usually have one person throwing a trap and one person throwing a uh, wacky stick bait. Get this out of the way here. Try not to break anything while I'm doing this. Oh, there we go. Dropping stuff. Yep, that's what I do. All right. You ready for this? Drum roll, please. Look at that joker. That's like three three days. Look at that thing. Huh? We beating the paint off of that trap this week. I'm telling y'all they're on that deal. And look, you probably can't see them, but all this stuff to where it's still some paint, it's got teeth marks all over it. So, man, they're all over that rattle trap right now. Uh, that's a quarter ounce. Bill Lewis Rat L Trap is what I'm throwing. And it is catching them right now. So, there's only two baits for this week's top five baits. It's kind of weird, but yeah, wacky stick bait, quarter ounce trap. Uh, a bonus one for y'all is Mike McFarlane. Uh, like this morning, his offshore bite didn't happen, but days leading up to now, he had a really good offshore bite. So he got his two sons, what's that's cool. Um, Days leading up to now, <clears throat> Mike was getting a really good offshore bite. He's got some big fish out there on the big shaky head. He's throwing a big heavy shaky head, like a three-quarter ounce shaky head, uh, and he's putting a big 10, 12-inch worm in uh, red shad. Well, he said one day it was red shad, the next day it was like watermelon candy, so he's throwing a big worm out there catching the... Uh... <laughs> catching the... Uh... Offshore fish. Sorry, I'm trying to read as I go along, so I'm sorry I'm fumbling through this. I know it's heck to listen to. But uh, appreciate you guys leaving all these comments. Y'all got some great. Oh, how deep? Uh, offshore fish were on top of uh, ridges and humps in 12 to 14 foot, is where they were located earlier in the week. Uh, Joe Lehu, go to your football game and get to playing. Joe says, I'll start these at the worst time. He's got to play a football game in 20 minutes. Hey, buddy. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate everything that you've done following me th through the years like you have, and I wish you the best of luck tonight in your football game, buddy. You're a big old boy. You better go out there and just mollywop somebody for your boy Billy, all right? I want your dad to send me a highlight of you de somebody, son. That's what I expect. Full expectations right there. <laughs> Billy Lawson's clown school. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it, it is like... A fumbling monkey with a football. It's bad in here, I'm telling you. Alright. Somebody says they got their two sons watching with me. I'm on the TV. Can I say hi? Alright, Miss Ashley Sawyer. I don't know what your two boys' names are, but we appreciate y'all watching. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you guys for checking me out. I'm on the TV. It's awesome that you guys are following along. We really appreciate it. So, hello to y'all. 
Hey, here is a good question. How would you adapt to a lake that has lost a lot of grass and what grass is left gets a lot of pressure? Well, hmm, that's a multi-tiered question. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go about that. One, you got two options there, man. You got to either fish for the fish that are still in the grass with all the pressure or you got to try and break down the water that doesn't have grass and locate fish in that. Um, the deal is when it loses a lot of grass, there's going to be a lot of fish that are going to leave that grass and look and, and, and you know, do other things. Uh, get on offshore structure, get on uh, deeper water structure, and there's going to be fish that are going to stay glued to the little bit of grass that it has, but they're getting a lot of pressure, so you may have to go about a different way of catching them. Here's something, a generous, a general tip to carry with you for pressured lakes. And, and hey, Lake Fork, I know a little bit about fishing pressured fish, a little bit. We get a little bit of pressure on that lake. Uh, what I have found over the years is when you're fishing really pressured fish like we do in the springtime and, and really most of the year, honestly, uh, it's, it's one of two ways to go about catching a pressured fish. And that is a really hard reaction, so something with a lot of thump, a lot of movement, a lot of sudden jerks and rips and something that moves really fast. So go ultra reaction or go ultra finesse and slow. Something that you fish painfully slow where you just leave it in their face forever. Um, but you have to go to one extreme or the other to catch these pressured fish. And that's what I found over the years. So I would do that in the grass. You know, maybe you go to a movement ADX if it'll reach the grass. Maybe you go to a chatterbait. Uh, and rip it out of grass real hard or trap and rip it out of grass real hard. That's your ultimate reaction, your ultra heavy reaction type baits. Or you go the other direction, hey, a trap. The things we're talking about tonight and then a Cinco for the other direction. Where you just throw that thing in the grass and you just let it sit there and sit there and sit there. And then you twitch it up and let it sit there and sit there. So I understand fishing pressure fish. I obviously kind of do the same thing. Right now the reason we're doing that is because it's not due to excess pressure. Uh, we do have a lot of boats like always, but what we are dealing with more is we had that cooling trend, then we had a warming trend, and that kind of put the, the fish in a, in a phase where they didn't really want to bite real good, so we're having to make them bite. So that we're doing the same things. You know, anytime it's a tough bite, you can go super reactive or super finesse. That should help you out. Try that out. That's my kind of dude right there. Old Joe Lahue has a football game tonight and a fishing tournament in the morning. Good luck at your fishing tournament in the morning and go knock somebody out tonight, Jack. That is my kind of dude right there. Football and fishing. It does not get If y'all don't know, I, I love football. Once upon a time, I played, but it's been a long, long time ago. But, yeah, football and fishing, that's awesome right there, brother. How do I catch fish in butt brush and stick ups? Well, a uh, couple couple things that I like to start with if I'm fishing flooded bushes like that. Uh, one is a, one is a jig. I like to flip a, a three eight ounce jig, small profile, uh, three eight ounce flipping jig, and, and really trim that skirt down and really trim your trailers down to where you have a really tight, compact profile on that jig, and flip that in and out of them bushes. Uh, and then I, I really actually I like a spinner bait uh, around the edges and through the little the little parts that you can get it through. Uh, I like to throw a spinnerbait around bushes a lot, so that's probably my two favorite ways to go about fishing bushes. Any effect on the fish from all of the tournament pressure last weekend? I had to find a different lake for Saturday. Way too many boats for me. Yeah, I as well. I took guide trips to other lakes last Friday and Saturday. Um, for sure, yeah, there's an effect on those fish. In fact, I didn't even fish Lake Fork again until Wednesday. <clears throat> of this week, so we fished Lake Fork the last three days now, but I stayed off it uh, all the way up through Tuesday. So yeah, there was there's always a huge effect on Lake Fork when you have the Sealy Outdoors Tournament 3,000 entries or whatever it is. <laughs> Boomer Sooner. <laughs> there's you Texicans and football team. Hey, I appreciate what you're doing there representing your team, but you will get no love, no love for Boomer Sooner around here. But we do have a common enemy. 
See there, Boomer Sooner? Look at picking his nose. Look at that, picking his nose. Oh, oh, Longhorn back there. We can both agree that he sucks, right? What's up with a whopper plopper? Heard a ton of positive about them lately. Well, I'll tell you what. The biggest fish that's been in my boat this year was a uh, – we've had, we've had a few fish over 10 pounds. They've all been right at the 10-pound mark. But the biggest one was a 10.30 uh, was caught on a whopper plopper at the, the last weekend of May. It was Memorial Day weekend in May, the last weekend of May this year. Um, yeah, 10.30 was caught on whopper plopper. I catch fish on a whopper plopper every year in the post spawn. Uh, it is without a doubt a very good bait. I primarily use it in that post spawn period. I don't use it as much in the fall. I will pick it up. The one thing I will tell you with a whopper plopper, you need wind. You have to have some ripple on the surface for that whopper plopper to do its thing from what I've seen for it to be at its best. Somebody says they dove hunting right now. We appreciate that too. Old dove hunters watching us in the field. Hey, hey, if you're close, you need to holler at your boy and let me come eat some of them bacon wrap things right there. You know what I'm talking about? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Somebody asking about uh, what about a lake with no grass, and then somebody says like Lake Conroe. Hey, Lake Conroe used to have grass when I fished it. <laughs> that's how long that's been. But uh, yeah, so when you go to a lake, like we have a lake uh, close to here, a little small lake called Lake Hallbrook. It has no grass. Um, and, and it has some stuff on the shoreline, some cattails and reeds, but it has no underwater vegetation to speak of like coontail or hydro or anything. Um, but it has a lot of docks. If they have a lot of docks, finding the right stretch of docks can be key. Uh, with anything, guys, with any lake that you go to, my number one priority is to pay attention to the bottom contours. The, the creek channel swings, the humps, the points, the road beds, the stuff that they're going to gather on is what I'm going to look for first, and then I'm going to break down whatever cover is available on those spots. So if I can find the right kind of points that I'm looking for or, or creek channel swings that I'm looking for and, and they have docks on them, hey, that's what I'm going to fish. If they have standing timber on them, that's what I'm going to fish. If they have brush piles, that's what I'm going to fish. So I'm going to really pay more attention to the structure, the bottom contours, when I'm breaking down a new lake trying to find stuff than I am any of the cover. Now, I, w I do want to know if it has grass or not first because grass can change everything. But when a lake has no grass, you got to look at the points the uh, road beds and all that stuff and, and, and based on your seasonal patterns you know go break all those areas down and see which one has the best cover with it and then start figuring out which one has the most fish on it what's the water temp on for it today the water temp, it's, been, it's staying in the lower half of the 80s right now. Uh, we've got a cool front due to come in here about a week from now. Uh, that's going to change things. We had gotten down into the upper 70s for a while, and that's what really started making those fish move. And then we went back up into the 80s, and even for a while we were in the upper 80s. And that really backed them back out and kind of put a freeze on their movements and really kind of put them in a funky state. But this next cold front is coming through. Well, I'm, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew because, hey, that could be a, a big deal to get them going again. And, and we're really close, guys. When it starts going... Man, it's going to go, and it's going to be fall bite really soon. I think this next cold front might be the one to do it, hopefully. Have I ever done something showing my graph setups? No, I have not shown my graph setups. I've shown uh, fish setup on my graph, but I've never shown my graph setup. If that is what you're wanting to see, you want to see my settings, let me know, and I'll be happy to go into my settings on a video and show you guys. Okay, so this is maybe, <clears throat> you know, there, there, there's no bad questions, but this is maybe the worst one to have to try and answer. How do you fish a jig? Nathan Flovin, Flovin says, I've always just kind of hopped it like a worm, but he's not really sure how to fish a jig. 
Well, the deal with the jig is it's versatile. You can fish it almost any way you want to. There's you know different kind of jigs that perform differently for different things, but you know a jig can be fished so many different ways. That's a very difficult question to ask. Um, right now, we're throwing a lot of you know we tried to throw in the fall, and we were up until this last week or so throwing a lot of swim jigs, swimming it through the top, burning it through the top of grass, you know, ripping it in and out of grass, working it through all the grass. Um, out deep, there's guys still throwing a football jig. And that one, you know, most of the time you're just dead dragging it, and every once in a while you hop it. Uh, sometimes you'll stroke it if the fish are up off the bottom a little bit. But there's no wrong way to fish a jig. It's really about, you can fish it differently from day to day. So very difficult question. That's a bad answer, and I'm sorry, but that's a very hard question to answer. Do the bass school in size this time of year, or will they be mixed together big and small? Okay, that's a great question, and that, that is something that definitely takes place. So right now, right now for us right here, we are, you know, at the end of summer, beginning of fall. The, the full migration, the full movement hasn't started yet. Through their movement, as they're moving in, they will move by size, their schools, they're schooled up by size. Little fish with little fish, big fish with big fish. Once they get where they're going, they just mix up. Like once we get to late October, early November, you'll be able to catch a 10 inch bass right next to a 10 pound bass. And what will also happen is you'll have a crappie, a catfish, a sand bass, a bar fish, and a bass on the same spot. <laughs> they get mixed up once they get once the fall migration stops and they're in their fall patterns, uh, which will probably be about three, four weeks from right now where we are, uh, they will get mixed up like crazy. But right now, they're schooled up by size. I am not familiar with LBJ. I've never been on LBJ. I've heard good things, though. Why am I wearing a hoodie? It's like 90 degrees. Well, I normally, my boat's not in here right now. My boat's just parked right outside the garage right now. But normally my boat's in here and I keep it really cold. I've got a window unit air conditioner over there. And in here, it's 68 degrees. So that's why I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> I keep it like a meat locker in here. If, we're, if you're on fork at the end of November, what areas and what baits would I concentrate on? Um, the end of November is going to be a very good time to be here. Uh, you can, there's a little bit of a you can do what you want type of situation. There are going to be fish on main lake structure that are really grouped up really good. There's going to be big schools offshore. Uh, and there's going to be uh, schools of fish in the backs of creeks and in the backs of pockets. Uh, so you can kind of do either one of those. That's usually the very peak of fall fishing is the second half of November uh, when they just really, the big fish really start eating and feeding up. It, it, that November is a phenomenal month to fish Lake Fork. Um, for me personally, I'll, I'm going to be doing more than likely, I mean, you know, hey, things change. I might be fishing offshore. I promise you guys, I do fish offshore and I do like deep fishing. Uh, it's just been that the lake's been full and there's been a lot of grass, so the shallow fish has been better for me. This year, I'm probably going to be in the backs of creeks. Uh, you know, creeks, big creeks like Birch and Williams and Mustang and Little Mustang and all those big creeks that have, you know, where they really migrate to the backs of them. I'm going to go in there and I'm probably going to be throwing uh, a trap is still going to be in play for me, but a trap, a jerk bait, a swim jig. Um, a square bill, the moving baits, I'm mostly going to focus on shad pattern moving baits. And then if I can find this bite, I'm really going to try and key in on the big swim baits because that's the time of year when you can hit the biggest home run of the whole year. If you can find that big bait bite in the fall, it can be phenomenal. So I'm going to throw a lot of big swim baits that time of year. If I'm connecting on them, that'll be the only thing I throw all day uh, when we get to that time of year. So. Can I hook up two GPS modules to one depth finder? I honestly do not know the answer to that question. You're saying can, the, the pucks, can you hook up two pucks at once? I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen that done. I've never done that. I had, when I had a hummingbird, I had a puck. 
the Lowrance has a built-in GPS that, that I use the built-in one. It works just fine. Um, I don't know if you can hook up to it once or not. I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that one. Can you use a medium heavy with a jerk bait rod? Yeah, you can throw a jerk bait on medium heavy. Um, I like throwing it on the lighter action rods. I feel like I get a better uh, action. I feel like the twitch of that jerk bait where it jerks and jerks and jerks. I like my action on my bait better with a lighter rod. But there's nothing wrong. You can throw it on a medium heavy. There's, it will cast. A jerk bait will cast on anything. It casts really well. Uh, I just like the action better on something between a medium and medium heavy like a really light medium heavy or a really really stout medium uh, is where i like to go on that I have a tournament tournament in november on fork what do you think is going to be working hey we just kind of went over that for november so hopefully that helps somebody just got a depths 250 yep depth use it they're talking about using that at the end of november uh, my best glide bait bite of my life came uh right around the Thanksgiving time on Fork two years ago. That's really where I started really dialing in on how to fish a glide bait and how to get fish to eat them. And uh, that's a bit, was the best glide bait bite of my life was two years, two falls ago on Fork at the end of November. So that depth's 250, 100%, throw that, throw that November. Uh, with that 250, that big one, you gotta realize you're not gonna catch a lot of fish. But you're gonna catch, every time you set the hook, that rod's gonna bow up and touch your elbow, so. You make sure you're not stocked good and you got a good hold of that rod when you throw that thing. Yep, go big or not at all like that. That's what I'm talking about in the fall, boy. It's good like that. What is a good big size shed imitation bait made by Berkeley for the Berkeley tournament? Good question. Good question right there. Berkeley tournament's coming up. What's a good big bait from Berkeley? Whew. <clears throat> tough question they have something that I believe they call a ripple shad that is a big swim bait uh, if I was going for an over in a Berkeley tournament I would be trying to find the biggest swim bait they make I believe they started making the Havoc series of sick fish in like a 7 inch version if they're making that in a I think I heard somewhere where they're making that in a 6 or 7 inch version if they're making that uh, sick shad or whatever it's called the, the Havoc swim bait if they're making that in a six, seven inch model, I would 100% throw that first. Uh, and then I know that Ripple Shad is kind of like a really big um, Kitek type bait looking thing. It's got some ribs on it. Uh, that'd be another option as well. But honestly, it seems like every year that Berkeley tournament gets one on a 10 or 12 inch uh, Blue Fleck Power Worm. That seems like that's what wins it almost every year. So. Hey, Jason Lafferty, comment if you're still watching, buddy. Let me know, Jay Laff, are you still watching tonight? Let me know if you're still here. Uh, you mentioned that you would use some larger swim baits. What is my favorite two swim baits? Okay, uh, I'll do, how about this? I'll do two soft and I'll do two hard swim baits. My favorite two soft swim baits are a uh, Smash Tech Convict, number one, the Weedless Convict. I love it, okay? Uh, that's probably my, my number one. And then number two is probably the Rago, which I may have one right here. This one's kind of old and beat up and discolored a little bit, but that's a, uh, that's a Jerry Rago weedless, weedless Rago. Love that Rago bait. I throw weedless baits a lot because Fork has so much cover. And it has, uh, you know, so much grass that I throw the, I like the weedless baits on my soft baits. So, yeah. Smash that convict number one, this number two. Rego. On my glide baits, my two favorites are hands down the Six Sense Flow Glider and the HPH Gliding Gizzard. Two favorites. Light hitch. Somebody asked what's the best color for Smash that convict. Light hitch, best color. Uh, that this one right here uh, is I use an eight aught. They make Owner Beast makes an eight aught three eighths ounce hook that I use on that one. On the Convict, I use a ten aught weightless hook. All right. 
So, one more announcement tonight, guys, and I'll get off here. Uh, I'm going to start doing something, and I don't know how often we're going to do it. I haven't determined that yet. But I'm going to do a customer appreciation or viewer appreciation giveaway. Uh, oh, somebody's asking, okay, what rod do I throw this on? I throw uh, my big swim baits, I throw on a 711 Extra Heavy uh, Limit 5 Series. They make a 711 Extra Heavy that is the lightest rod of that size I've ever thrown. And it handles it. You can literally whip this thing around like a spinnerbait with that 711 Extra Heavy. Uh, Limit 5 Series, it's a $150 rod, and you can't find one even close to that for that price. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, so this is going to be customer slash viewer appreciation giveaway that I'm going to do. It might be every six months. It might be every couple months. It's probably going to be a little bit schedule dependent. Um, but we're going to do the first one tonight. And the way this is going to work is, A, you're going to need to follow me on all three platforms. My three platforms being YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So you got to like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram, and you got to be a subscriber on YouTube. But it's just going to be every once in a while I'm going to give it away to the guys who interact with me the most here, who are always watching the most. And I'm just it's a way for me to say thank you for following the channel and following the pages and being part of the community that, that we're trying to build. So uh, tonight I'm going to give away to a guy. This guy's taking multiple guide trips with me. He, ha he watches on every single platform. He comments on every platform. He participates on every all three of the platforms that I use. Uh, Mr. Jason Lafferty. Buddy, you got a free trip with me uh, in the month of November. We'll do it sometime in November, whenever works for your schedule and my schedule. But Jay Laugh, you get a free trip with me in November. So holler at your boy. All right. Hey, last thing too. October is getting booked up. I think I've got like eight or nine days left for the whole month to book. So if you want to get on an October trip, it's going to be some really good fishing. Let me know. Most of the trips are available at the end of the month. There's a few available the first week. The middle two weeks are kind of booked up. So if you got some time and you want to come out early October or late October, you need to holler at me quick because it's getting booked up. Let's see here. What structure or cover do I throw the HPH glide bait on? Well, honestly, uh, <laughs> grass, grass, grass. That's all I ever say is grass, right? The, the reason I'm throwing over grass so much is because we have such good grass in Lake Fork right now. Um, but we like to throw it over. Man, these, they're kind of like, they're hard to describe a little bit. They're, if you've got a main lake point, and then off the side of that point, there's a little flat that kicks off. We call them, Mike calls them escarpments. But they're just almost like a little secondary type point that kicks off of the side of the point. And they'll, they'll make these little shelves. They're kind of hard to describe. They're very unique and they're not easy to find. Um, but for some reason on Fork, those big fish like to push bait up the big gizzard shed on the main lake up on those little side kickoffs. And we throw those baits a lot on those. It's kind of a hard one. I'd almost have to have you with me to show you those. Um, but grass flats, you know, where the grass doesn't grow all the way to the surface as it gets colder and that grass starts dying down a little bit and it's not growing as tall man over the top of those grass flats those glide baits are phenomenal all right uh if you're looking for limit rods around lake fort the lake fort tackle store has the full lineup of limit five series and limit elites they have an upper end rod. If you guys like really nice rods and you guys want a really high end rod, they have one that's only 200 bucks, and it is as good as any rod I've ever put in my hands. I'm telling you guys, I fish with some of the best rods in the world, and I would put these limits up against anybody. And they have a limit elite series that is just, man, that thing's ridiculous. It is so nice. It's ridiculous. Um, but 150 for the five series and uh, 200 for the Elite Series, Lake Fork Tackle in Emory, Texas. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to do it. <clears throat> Man, I can't. I can't give, give me some of this right here. Mm. Much better. Appreciate you guys watching. i uh, got a couple videos I just filmed yesterday for next week's videos. Um, it's just going to be me on them. 
It's going to be on Lake Fork, current, advice. You're going to basically, you're going to see a lot of this guy, and you're going to see a lot of that wacky worm. <laughs> and you're going to see me going half crazy trying to catch fish. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate you watching. As always, can't say thank you enough to all of you that contribute and participate in this community. It means the world to me. And uh, other than that, hey, we'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.